hello, Grey Fries, and welcome to another Digging Deeper. And once again, we're going to look back and have another think about our passage from Sunday. And on Sunday, we were looking at Jesus' prayer in Gethsemane in Matthew 26. And in particular, I want to have a look again specifically at how Jesus prays. Because in verse 39, we see something that I think is exceptional. You know, we get to see exactly how it is that Jesus chooses to pray in this moment of deep trial and challenge and difficulty. And perhaps unsurprisingly, what it is that we see is that Jesus chooses to pray himself in the way that he taught his disciples to pray earlier in his ministry. It's a prayer that we know as the Lord's Prayer, and you can read it in Matthew 6. But perhaps as you read the Lord's Prayer and then Jesus' prayer in this chapter together side by side, you'll notice some of the similarities. You'll notice some of the common threads of how Jesus clearly wanted his followers to pray. So let's have a look. Firstly, Jesus begins by addressing God as his Father. And that reflects what we see at the beginning of the Lord's Prayer, our Father in heaven. Clearly fundamental for Jesus in how we should approach God in prayer is to recognise that he is our Father. He's the Father who loves us and cares for us, that we can rely on and reach out to. As I said on Sunday, God isn't some distant and disinterested deity, but he's a God who chooses to engage with us in this closest of relationships. Next in Gethsemane, Jesus turns to ask that he might be spared the trial that he's about to face. And that's just like how in the Lord's Prayer, he encourages his disciples to pray, lead us not into temptation. You know, some have translated that petition in the Lord's Prayer as lead us not into the time of testing. You know, we know that God can work all things for good. And yet it seems from Jesus like it's appropriate for us to ask that we wouldn't find ourselves facing some of the troubles, trials, pains and sufferings of life. And in particular, we're to pray that we won't be into these times of testing, you know, these times we see throughout the Bible, different people facing these deepest darkest moments that God uses for our good but are themselves not good. And then finally Jesus submits himself to the will of the Father and that's just as he told his disciples to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And prayer is a place in which we get to realign our hearts with God's heart, to recognise that it's not always about what we want, that we're not the king on the throne, that we're not God but that God is. As we come before God trusting him in prayer, he shapes us by his spirit to desire his kingdom and his will. And so in this most testing of times, Jesus comes back to the style of prayer, the format of prayer that he taught his disciples when they asked him how to pray. And perhaps for you, the Lord's Prayer is just something that you remember from school. Maybe you learned it as a child. It's a simple prayer that you left behind in childhood. But I wanted to suggest that what we see in the life of Jesus is that this prayer is a model for how we should pray. Not just something that we should mindlessly recite, not just something that's good for children or for liturgy, but something that is good for our souls. That it's a framework, a scaffolding upon which we can build a life of prayer. And so this week, perhaps you want to step into using it more. Perhaps this could become a regular part of your praying life. Perhaps you could join some of us who set an alarm for midday every day to pray the Lord's Prayer. And not just word for word, but using it as a model for how we can approach our God in heaven. And can I invite us to finish by using it together now? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.